It's Thursday, July 25th. I'm Sam Cedar. And I'm Lucy Steiner. Which one of these stories will you be talking about today? Amid mass protests, Puerto Rico's governor finally announces his resignation, admitting he can no longer credibly remain in power. Meanwhile, President Trump vetoes a bipartisan resolution to block arms sales to his good buddies in Saudi Arabia. Lastly, Nancy Pelosi denies the latest calls for Trump's impeachment following the testimony of special counsel Robert Mueller. You're listening to Majority.fm's AM Quickie, and these are the stories you need to know. Puerto Rico Governor Ricardo Rosea resigned Wednesday night after Puerto Ricans took to the streets during historic protests calling him to step down. Rosea said he would step down August 2nd and he'd be replaced by Puerto Rico Secretary of Justice Wanda Vasquez. Thousands demonstrated outside the governor's mansion Wednesday night calling for Rosea's resignation after it was revealed he used homophobic and misogynistic language about victims of Hurricane Maria. Protest leaders say Rosea's resignation is just the first step in what's a historic challenge to political power structure that has long been dominated by two parties. President Trump vetoed a series of bipartisan measures on Tuesday that would have blocked the sale of billions of dollars worth of arms to Saudi Arabia and UAE over their role in the Yemeni war. Congress is not expected to have the two-thirds majority needed to override the president's vetoes. This is just the third time since taking office that Trump has used his veto pen, and it just happens to be his second veto of a Saudi-related measure. In a statement, House Foreign Affairs Chair Elliot Engel said, quote, The veto sends a grim message that America's foreign policy is no longer rooted in our core values, namely a respect for human rights. Not convinced that it ever was, but he would certainly be right about now. Majority.fm's AM Quickie is fueled by JustCoffee.coop. Just Coffee is a worker-owned coffee roaster based in Madison, Wisconsin that has sponsored the Majority Report for nearly a decade. Check out their collection of fair trade roasts, including our own Majority Report blend. And regardless of what you order, receive 10% off your order when you use the code MAJORITY at checkout. And all shipping is free. That's coupon code MAJORITY at JustCoffee.coop. Politico reports that House Judiciary Chair Jerry Nadler pushed to begin the impeachment process against President Trump following the testimony of Special Counsel Robert Mueller on Wednesday, only to be denied by Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Pelosi argued that the slow, methodical approach is the best way to move forward, despite the fact that more than 90 of her members have called for an impeachment inquiry to begin now. Nadler reportedly countered Pelosi's pushback by noting that the polls showed limited support for removing President Richard Nixon from office when the House began its impeachment hearings in 1973, but that public support for the effort grew as more evidence came out about Nixon's illegal behavior. Check out yesterday's Majority Report. We did live coverage of both hearings and a summary of the judicial one in the afternoon. And now for what we're following today, some quicker quickies. Quicker quickie. BuzzFeed News reports that a federal judge in San Francisco on Wednesday blocked a policy banning asylum for thousands of Central Americans and others who crossed through Mexico to reach the southern border, dealing a significant blow to the Trump administration's effort to restrict asylum. The Intercept is reporting that the reformist district attorney Larry Krasner from Philadelphia argues that the Pennsylvania death penalty is unconstitutional. AP reports that a federal judge blocked new abortion restrictions in Arkansas minutes before they were set to take effect on Wednesday, including a measure that opponents say would likely force the state's only surgical abortion clinic to close. House of Representatives approved an anti-robocalling measure that would make it easier for the government to impose tougher penalties on illegal robocallers and fraudsters. And the Dallas Morning News has a story today about Francisco Erwin Galaxia, a Dallas-born U.S. citizen who spent 23 days in the custody of the U.S. Border Protection in conditions that made him so desperate, he says he almost opted to self-deport. Quicker! Quickie! That's it, folks. Thanks for listening to Majority.fm's AM Quickie. Lucy? Thank you, Sam. Don't forget to check out the Majority Report today at noon, wherever your podcasts are found.